Welcome to Behold, a series for women longing to live a life worthy of the call they've received. I'm Christy Forsh, and this is episode 14. Hello, ladies. Welcome back for another weekly episode of our Behold podcast. How's it going this week? I hope that you're doing really well. As you remember, last week we started talking about relationships. And in order to talk about relationships, we kind of had to look at ourselves again and look at the people around us and talk a little bit about emotional maturity and how sometimes when we are really focused on things outside of ourselves, for if we think that that's the cause of our emotions, it makes us emotionally immature. And if we look inside of ourselves into our thoughts to create our emotions, then we're actually using our emotions the way we're supposed to as a barometer to help us manage those thoughts and live that life that we want to live. Okay, so today we're going to get into a new topic in relationships. I'm pretty excited about this one. This one was really eye-opening for me. But as we get started, let us start with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Just come and wash upon us all. Fill our hearts. Help us to hear the things that you want to hear us to hear, even when they're difficult. Help us to take the seeds that we're given. Help us to plant them and water them, but only the seeds that come from you. Help us to cultivate the life that you want us to live. Help us to see ourselves the way you see us, but also help us to see other people the way you see them so that we may love ourselves and love others in the way that you're calling us to. We ask that all that we do to give glory to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. So today we are going to be talking about a topic called manuals. Now you've all heard of a manual before. It's You get your manual whenever you buy an appliance or a new item. They'll give you the manual and it'll go through and tell you exactly what you need to know and how that thing should operate. It's your operation manual. Well, interestingly, all of us have a ton of manuals. And we have these manuals for all the other people in our lives. We have a manual for our husband. We have a manual for our kids. We have a manual for friends. We have a manual for our parents and our siblings. And everyone we interact with, we have a manual. And in that manual, it tells us what they should and shouldn't be doing. We use this as a, ma as a mean of con means of control. We try to control people through our manual. We say, you should do this. You should do that. Because I have determined that that is how a husband should operate. I have determined that this is how a friend should operate. And so it is a way of our brain trying to control that person. And oftentimes we, oftentimes we do this because we are looking for our emotions to come from that person. So we say, for example, a good husband should bring me flowers. Well, that's just a thought. Because we want our husband to bring us flowers because we know that when he brings us flowers, it makes us feel good. And so we're looking for that good feeling but it's not actually him bringing us flowers that makes us feel good. It's our thoughts about him bringing us flowers that makes us feel good. So you can see where that emotional immaturity comes from when we start to open that manual and take it out and use it as our guiding, our guiding form for all of our relationships. And we all do this, each and every one of us, so many manuals. The other interesting thing is we don't share our manuals with others. We have manuals for all these people in our lives, and we just expect them to know it. We just expect that our manual is universal and everybody else is going to know exactly how I want them to behave. But of course that isn't the case. Everybody has their own set of manuals, and maybe some people's manuals are pretty close to you, to yours and how you expect friends to be, and their manuals are pretty close of how they expect friends to be, but they're not going to be spot on. They're not going to be exact. And we don't communicate this. We don't communicate to each other what our expectations are. And so then when someone doesn't follow those expectations that we have clearly set out in our manual that we have not shared at all, we get really frustrated and upset. We think thoughts like, oh, they don't really care about me. 
uh, they were actually a good friend, they wouldn't have done that. These things are holding us back from loving each other in the way that we're supposed to. And oftentimes, we just make all of this mean something that it doesn't. Manuals don't really mean anything because they're arbitrary, because we've just made them up and we haven't shared them. They don't really mean anything. The other people in your life, maybe we don't always agree with what they're doing, and that's okay. And this isn't to say that we shouldn't have boundaries and we shouldn't have healthy relationships. But this is to say that we need to just kind of start to accept people for who they are. And if we do have a boundary, we probably need to communicate it. And we're going to have a whole episode of boundaries coming up. So keep this separate from that. All right. I'm not talking about unhealthy situations right now. We are going to get into boundaries, but right now we're going to just keep going into this manual topic because I think it's really fascinating because I know that once I heard about this, it was like this light bulb went on for me of, oh my goodness, I have a manual for everyone and I could see it. I could completely see it once I got into it. So I want to get dive into it a little bit more with you. So we all have these manuals and when we start to, when we close the manual and we put it down, we begin to love the person as they are right there in that moment as they are. And a really interesting thing happens when we do that. We start to notice them more. We start to notice who they actually are because we're not looking at them through the lens of the manual like you didn't operate correctly here or here, so you're broken here or here. When we close that manual, we can just look at them more along the lines of the way God looks at them. We can see them more as a whole person rather than just in our, in our little book. And when we start to see them that way, we hear them better. We kind of hear the reasons behind things more. Like maybe we hear the reasons why our husband's not bringing us flowers. Maybe we start to understand why he does those things that drive us crazy. Maybe with our friends, we start to hear that they have some really good ideas about what friendship is too. And they're different from ours, but they're beautiful too. And as we start to hear each other more and get to know each other on this deeper level and get to getting to know more of that actual person, rather than just our, our guidebook, we become more connected. And if you've been following this series, it's my guess that you really are looking for more connection with the people in your lives. This is how we get more connected, by putting that manual down. Have to put it down. Okay, so I'm gonna give you an example. And this is an example that that's from early on in my marriage, from a long time ago, and we did figure this out before I found mindset work, but I just now looking back, I can see that it was, that it was a manual issue. And so I just thought it'd be kind of fun to run through it. But, um, so my example, the circumstances that early in my marriage, my husband was working at a really um, physical job and he was working a whole lot of hours and I wanted us to be busy all weekend. I wanted us to be doing stuff all weekend, every weekend. And he wanted every so many weekends, he wanted a weekend to just stay home the whole weekend and relax and get some extra sleep and, and just kind of recharge his battery. Now, when I, as I'm explaining this right now, that sounds pretty reasonable, but <laughs> excuse me, back then, that is not what I thought. So my circumstance was that my husband likes to be home and relax. Okay. And my husband has said, I'm going to put that because we need our circumstance to be neutral. So my husband said he wants to stay home this weekend and relax. My thought was he's embarrassed of me. He doesn't want to take me out because he's embarrassed of me. And so when I would think that thought, I would feel really yucky. I'd feel really yucky about it. And I, you know, I'd feel unloved, uncared for embarrassed of myself. And from that place, I would act really disconnected from him. I would um, not be attentive, try to, you know, I wouldn't spend time with him over the weekend. You know, I'd probably be grumpy with him, snap at him. So he wouldn't get that relaxing weekend that he wanted so much. And then the result was that we were disconnected, that, that it wasn't going well. And of course, at that point, I was blaming him because I thought 
a good husband should take me out every weekend. This is before we had kids, by the way. <laughs> a good husband should um, want to be out with me, should want to go do these things. Well, then I finally talked to him and I realized that it wasn't about me at all. It was just about his body and his mental health and he just needed that rest, but he wanted to spend that time with me. And so in that case, then we change our thoughts. Okay, so the circumstance stays the same. Husband said he wants to stay home for the weekend and relax, but instead I can change my thoughts to, um, he loves me. He loves me so much that he's willing to work so hard. And sometimes he just needs a rest and he needs a break and that's okay. And I'm so lucky that he wants to spend this time with just me. And from, from thoughts like that, I'm going to feel a lot more love. I'm going to feel cherished. And when you feel loved and cherished, you're going to be a lot more doting on your husband. Okay. And so then your actions are that you're more attentive. You spend time together, you talk together. And then from that place, your result is that you're more connected. You have that connection. So by putting down that manual of a good husband should be doing this and just loving him as he was, like as this is what he needs and this is a good thing for him, we can be more connected that way. I'm going to give you another example. So we also have manuals for our friends. And so let's say that you have a manual for your friend and in that manual, good friends call each other once a week is written in your manual. And you are so sure that all good friends call each other every week. So you are, you, and, and good friends call you back. Good friends should call you back as soon as they can after you've called them. So let's say you have a friend and they have not called you and you called them and they have not called back. Well, your manual says they're not that good of a friend then. So you're having this thought, my friend doesn't really care about me. We're not as good of friends as I thought. And from that place, you're going to feel pretty yucky. <laughs> you're going to feel like uncared for, maybe kind of lonely. And from there, your, your actions are going to be that you check out of that relationship. You're not going to keep calling or keep texting. You're going to pull back, pull out. And from that place, your result is that you're disconnected in that friendship and maybe that friendship does fizzle out. Okay. You've just proven... Remember, our result always proves our thought. So you've just proven that thought that you weren't as good of friends as you thought you were. Instead, if we put the manual down and our friend hasn't called us and our friend hasn't returned our call, instead of thinking they don't care about me, when we put the manual down, we think, I wonder what's going on with them. Hmm, I bet they're really busy right now. Maybe I should check in on them again. You know, you start to think more about what might be going on with them rather than just how this affects you. And from that place, then you're able to think thoughts like we are such good friends. And you can prove that self, prove that thought to your brain. You can think of times when, when she has been calling you and when you've had these wonderful memories together and these different, different things that have happened between you that, that show you that you're good friends. So you can choose the thought instead of, we are good friends. And then when you think that we are good friends, you're going to feel that like warm, fuzzy, I love my friend feeling. And from there, you're going to call or you're going to text or you're going to reach out to her. You know, hey, I haven't heard from you for a while. What's going on? And from that action, you're going to keep that connection going. And you, more than likely, she's going to say, oh, my goodness, it's been the craziest week. This kid was sick and my husband was out of town and this um, the other kid had three ball games and, you know, you just go th through all these things and she's just like, it was so crazy. Let's catch up next week. Great. Good friends can do that. Okay. And then your result, of course, is that you're just, you're going to stay connected and stay present in your relationships. And that is such a beautiful thing. It's just, it's really funny because so many of us have these, these manuals and, with friendships, it's funny because some people's manuals say friends will call every week and some people's manuals say friends will talk whenever they talk and they'll just pick up where they left off. 
and other people's manuals will say friends need to spend time alone together and some people's manuals say friends need to spend time with their you know like on mommy play dates with the kids and you know there's just so many different rules we have in place for our friendships it's no wonder that that friendships can be hard for moms because there's all these rules we have all these rules that we're not sharing and our friends have all these rules that they're not sharing and really all of us need to just put the rule book down and love each other and I really think that you know from putting the rule book down for me for putting these manuals down it really helps me give everybody the benefit of the doubt and yes some people some people do things that are are inexcusable and like I said we're gonna talk about boundaries too but my guess is most of the people in your life not everyone but most of the people in your life are just doing the very best that they can and they want to be in a relationship with you and they want to love you and they want to be loved by you but our manual is getting in the way of that and their manual might be getting in the way of that too their manual might be getting in the way of that but God has not called them quite to this work yet and so it's your job to be the example to put your manual down to be present to them and as they see that and they notice that that level of vulnerability to you from you where you're not holding them to any expectation you're just present with them in that moment when they see you doing that they're gonna want to do that too and you're just gonna grow together I think I've said this before but that was one of my my best things between my husband and I doing this is when I put my manual down I was able to just let him love me and I was able to just love him and that was beautiful for our marriage and for our connection and the same thing with our kids now with kids of course there are things that they need to do and we do have to have wouldn't exactly call it a manual, but we do have to have certain things because we are teaching them virtues and we are working on helping them to get to heaven and helping them grow into, into adults. And we have a resp certain responsibility there, but they're also, they're also kids. We don't need to have a manual for our kids. Okay. Whenever you hear yourself sit thinking he shouldn't be doing that. She shouldn't be doing that. He should do this. She should do that. That should word is a huge clue that you're whipping out your manual. Because who says what any of us should do? Now, of course, there are moral issues. You know, God has told us some of those things we should and shouldn't do. But those come from God. Okay? And God also gave us free will at the same time and we don't know what somebody's story is we don't know what they need to go through to get to heaven what they need to learn from the mistakes that they've made so that they can get to heaven okay so we just need to have so much love and compassion for everyone else just like we have to have so much love and compassion for ourselves and so if we're saying somebody should be doing something and it's actually a moral issue of course you can talk to them about that if it is on your heart and God is calling you to be a light to them and to tell them then of of course, of course, point that out to them. But don't just shoot it around in your brain where you're like, oh, he shouldn't be doing that, so I'm not going to be a part of his life anymore. Or I'm going to disconnect from him because a good friend wouldn't, wouldn't do those things. Okay, don't make it a manual issue. Okay, and the other thing about the manual is that we also have a manual for ourselves. We have a manual of ourselves. We tell ourselves, you should be doing this. You should be doing that. You have a choice. You are an adult. You can do what you want to do. You have free will. There are consequences to the things that you do, but you're choosing to do those things. Okay? And that's where that emotional maturity comes in. Realizing that you have the choice you are able to do the things you want to do. You might say to me, I should be feeding the kids dinner. I have to feed the kids dinner. No, you don't have to feed the kids dinner. Yes, there's a consequence to that. They're going to be hungry. And if you do it too many times, yeah, they could be taken away from you. There is a consequence. And you don't want that. You love them. You want them to be fed and cared for. So instead of thinking I should be making dinner, 
It's more of a thought, I get to make dinner. I get to love and serve my family. I'm so grateful that I have this food that I can feed them. Just making these little tiny shifts in our thoughts can change our whole day and can change all of our relationships. Okay? So most of us think when we're using our manual that if the people around us did the things in the manual, we would feel that way. Like I brought up before, if our husband brought us flowers, if he would just bring us flowers every week, because in my manual it says husbands bring flowers. My manual doesn't say that, by the way, but some people's do. If, if um, my husband would just bring me flowers every week, I would feel good. And I'd like to really challenge you that your feeling doesn't come from those flowers. Your feeling comes from those thoughts about the flowers. So when your husband comes in the door on Friday and he has flowers, what do you think? You think, oh, he loves me so much. And then you feel excited and loved and, and then your actions and your results come from there. When your husband d comes home on Friday and doesn't have flowers, then what is it? You feel, maybe you feel, or maybe you start to think he doesn't really care about me. If he really cared, he would have brought me flowers. Maybe he doesn't love me as much as I thought. We don't have a good relationship. These are the kind of thoughts that go through our heads when we have a manual issue. And so then from those, those thoughts, those crummy thoughts, they really make you feel bad. And so then you're going to feel that loneliness and that disconnection and you're going to feel unloved. And then from there, you know, your actions and your results will follow. But I'd like to challenge you that instead, you get to choose your thoughts and you get to choose your feelings. So why not choose that feeling, that feeling of be feeling loved and cared for and cherished? And why don't we choose to feel that even when he comes home without flowers? And how do we do that? By choosing the thought, by choosing on Friday when my husband gets home, whether he has flowers or not, I am going to choose to think that's my guy. He loves me so much. And if that's the thought that I have when he walks through the door, I'm not going to feel lonely. I'm not going to feel crummy. I'm not going to feel unloved or unseen because I have a thought that's going to give me the feeling that I want to feel. So this week, I want you to think about one of the relationships in your life. And I want you to write down something that you're starting to see is a manual issue. Something that you think they're doing that causes you an emotion. I want you to write that down and I want you to model it out. I want you to write the circumstance and then what previously has been your thought, your feeling, your action, your result. Okay, when they don't do that thing in your manual. And then I want you to write down when they do do the thing from your manual, when they do follow the manual correctly, your thought, your feeling, your action result. And I want you to pay really close attention to that thought and feeling for when they follow your manual. And I want you to take that thought and feeling and I want you to put it over there when they don't follow your manual. Okay? And I want you to just try it out. Just try it out. Go through just like the example that I just went through and see if you can still get that feeling of connection even when they don't follow your manual. If you can just love them as is and let them love you as is. And if there's something in your manual like, I really want flowers every Friday, tell him. Tell him, I'd really like flowers every Friday. He doesn't have to do it. He doesn't. And that's okay. And be okay with that. You know, he knows that I'd really like flowers, but it's just not his strength. He has a lot of other really great strengths. And think about those. Think about all the other ways that he shows you how much he loves you. Okay? This manual thing can be kind of eye-opening. And you're going to see it. It's going to start popping up. You're going to see, oh, yep, that was a manual issue. Oh, yeah, look. Uh, oh, I, I keep thinking in my head he should do this or she should do that. You're going to see it with your kids a lot, too. It's coming. 
but we're just going to keep moving forward and we're going to trust all these relationships in our lives, all these beautiful people that God has put in our lives. We're going to trust them all to him. And we're going to trust that he's going to show us the way to love them best. And I promise you, he's going to show you the way that you, to love them best. And it's not going to be with a manual. And once we start doing this, we will be closer to living the life worthy of the call we have received. I'm Christy Horsch. Thank you so much for joining me.